trashy, trashy, where we take a dumpster dive on this week's garbage people and look at all the trashiest news stories. My name is Erica, and I am your host. My name is Cassandra, and I'm your other host. What's up, Erica? How's it going? How are you? You know, I'm doing pretty good. I've got about half a glass of wine in my system, and I um, I've left town. You know, clear my head a little bit, be in a different setting, and I think that that's nice. I was going to go to like kind of a bougie dinner tonight, but wouldn't you know it? I just want a salad. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. Like, I feel like I've just been eating like carbs and shit like crazy lately, Mm -hmm. you know, cause like you get COVID and then you, you know, the dog and like, I just get depressed and stuff. And then you're just like, well, I, I earned this or whatever. Or or even if I didn't earn it, I was like, I'm going to eat this anyways. Mm -hmm. And so, man, I just would like a couple vegetables. Oh, I know that feeling when you are just like anything green I need in my body. It's usually, I feel that way when I get back from vacations, but I'm feeling this way now, like as in the start of my vacation, because, you know, it's like, well, this is supposed to be relaxing. I don't feel relaxed when I feel like I have scurvy. So (laughs) I understand. Uh, What's up? What do you, what's, what's your, what's up with you? Well, Last weekend, I went to a last weekend. I went to a country music festival out here in Southern California, and I saw a Willie Nelson, and I saw Casey Musgraves, and the Turnpike Troubadours, and Orville Peck, and a bunch of other amazing, fun artists. And I was having just a, a boot scooting good time. And I, a friend of the pod, upgraded my ticket to a VIP ticket. Yo, it was great. And I thought that came with air conditioned bathroom. The simple pleasures in life. Isn't that fucking nuts? Were they always offering air conditioned bathrooms for more money at festivals? Like when we were going in our early 20s? I don't remember that being an option. Maybe I was just too poor and didn't know about them. That's what I was. uh, That's what I'm thinking is that maybe I've been too poor and I didn't know. But I like when they were doing that when we were young festival uh, when they were doing it, i mean i guess it's happening in october but the fact that you could pay a little bit more to get air-conditioned bathrooms i was like i don't remember that being an option at warp tour mm-hmm. so how was it oh it was it was lovely the the first time i went though uh the, it was like you stepped into the air-conditioned trailer and there were like six stalls and then you know with doors and then a sink and i stepped out and then a older what what appeared to be an older gentleman who was working the festival stepped out at the same time of his stall. And he was like, Oh, 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 I'm so sorry. I didn't realize this was the women's room. And I, I was just like, you know, man, gender's kind of a construct. It's like really not that big of a deal. You were, we're all shitting here. We're all just shitting in an air condition. Well, I just was like, no big deal. There was individual, you know, full link door stalls. Yeah. Well, this other woman starts to fucking monologue and freak out on him. She's like, no, it, this is the women's room. This is, this is, do you see? And then she like basically leads him outside to show him this is the the little cartoon character that says woman. And this is the women's room and that you can't be in here. And I was like, bitch, he said, sorry. And he obviously made a mistake. He's not going to do it again. He doesn't, feel like some pervert like he just made a mistake it's a and not that big of a fucking deal and I just watched her and he again said oh I'm so sorry I'm leaving but she went on for almost a minute oh my god while he was trying to just politely escape wash his hands and escape but she just kept going on and I was like you're being so trashy for someone that made a mistake bitch <laughs> like, i just was so upset did you with say anything i i just said i i started with you know it's not a big deal ginger's kind of a construct <laughs> with my little bullshit and then she launched and i was like it's not that big of a deal is all i said as as we both walked out at the same time oh my god psycho and psycho just went off on him and i was like this man is 40 years our senior It's a hot day. And again, no harm, no foul. It's not that big of a deal, but she's the type of person that made it a deal. 
uncultured. You know, that just proves that she's never been to Europe because guess what? In Europe, just stalls and then like a sink that everyone else uses at the same time. Yeah. Oh, it okay. was it was comical. It was so, it was genuinely. I was like, is this? Am I high or is this happening? What's what's going on? But man, an air conditioned bathroom, clutch. I don't want to put you on the spot, but you told a very funny bathroom story to me this week in a voice memo and oh god yes like 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 requesting when you know someone knows how to play piano at a christmas party will you play that carol for us will you play silent night that's how i feel right now like will will you tell the story you told because boy oh boy did it make me laugh (laughs) so i had to go to i had to go to a doctor and pick up a sleep study machine a sleep study machine. And all that required was me to walk into a doctor's office, sign a form, pick up a piece of equipment, leave, sleep, and then return the piece of equipment the next day. But I had to go to the bathroom while picking up the piece of equipment. So I said, excuse me, may I have the restroom key? And they said, absolutely no big deal. So I grabbed the key. And then it wasn't until I got into the restroom that I realized, oh, buckle in kids. We're going to be here a minute. And I was in the bathroom for an embarrassing amount of time. <laughs> Afraid my, my car, the meter on the car was going to run out amount of time. <laughs> and then I realized I still have the bathroom key. I have to now slink back in to the <laughs> doctor's office with this key. So instead of wanting them to know, oh, I've just been in the bathroom the whole time, I put on my best Meryl Streep and I come in and I go, <laughs> oh, oh my, oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed. I, I, I drove away with the key. I went to the bathroom and I drove away with the key. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I got, I, I, I would like had to turn around. I'm so sorry. I can't believe it. Uh, Here's the key. I'm again, so sorry. And they said, oh my gosh, no big deal. That happens all the time. And I wanted to be like, no, y'all, what happens all the time is people are shitting in that public bathroom for a very long time (laughs) and are too embarrassed to tell you that you're (laughs) hot. That's Uh, so fucking funny. So humiliating. And then I had to walk back down to my car why are you trash that's not it is it no and okay i'm i don't know if i should go for the 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 what's the hat trick of bathroom stories or if i should pivot or the hat trick or the turkey if it's uh bowling yes the how okay dealer's choice hat trick or different story hat trick let's do it poop 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 (laughs) poop i shits (laughs) guess what we all do that's going to be my kid's book. <laughs> Trashy yeah. Trashy presents Erica Shits. <laughs> it's not everybody poops. It's, it's, a, it's a story for just me. Everybody I, poops and Erica Shits. <laughs> if I get in a coma and I don't remember and I get really like I don't remember anything and I'm just really embarrassed. It's, it's your book to me. And you're like, yeah. hey, it's normal. Erica Shits. <laughs> hey, Erica Shits. It's okay. So I had to give blood. At a like a quite like a, a a blood donation like a for a uh-huh. test a testing place, and they said, "Oh, we're actually going to need a urine sample too." So I got like the first appointment in the morning, and I drank a full bottle of water before I had gone. And I said, "Okay, I'm prepared for this." So I don't I you know gave my little you know samples of blood, and then I went into the bathroom, and I could not pee. And I heard just little knocks on the door. Stop. And I was like, so, oh, uh, uh, occupied. Oh, uh, uh, someone's in here. And then they, uh, okay. And then five, 10 minutes, five, I don't know how much time, but time was passing. <laughs> and then I'd hear another knock on the door. Um, we, we have other patients that need to use the bathroom and I was like oh, oh my god okay, okay I'm trying I'm trying and so finally after 18 minutes no 18 minutes they would have called least- security at, at, at <laughs> minute 15 <laughs> bathroom they would have they have keys to get in there they would have thought you fell down 
No, because I was in verbal communication with him. And I was like, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I've tried. I, I don't. I get so anxious. I, I guess I have, I can't pee. Can I have some more water? And I drank four bottles of water and paced up and down the hallway. <laughs> I was in the, normally my blood, the in and out 15, 20 minutes maximum. I was there for close to an hour because I just could not <laughs> pee. And I, I was just going, <laughs> but I guess in the meantime, having left the bathroom, and coming back, I hadn't zipped up my fly all the way. No. And a gentleman starts trying to make conversation with me. And I don't know what he's talking about. And he keeps pointing at me. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know what you're, what you're saying. And he says, X, Y, Z. And I, I don't, I'm sorry. I don't know what that, what that is. And he's like, X, Y, Z. And he's pointing at me and he's saying X, Y, Z, which I guess is the imprint on some zippers yeah so what why would you know that but I didn't know what he was saying and this is an older gentleman who English was not his first language and he kept saying xyz and I finally I was like I don't know what I'm so sorry 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 sorry, I do not know what you're saying and he he just finally did the motion himself of zip up your zipper and I was like, oh, oh, thank you. Thank you so much. And I zip, finally, I zipped up my zipper. And again, I was like, thank you. And he was like, this dumb bitch. Like, he didn't say that, but his tone was like, I was trying to help. I was trying to be discreet and help you. I, four more bottles of water. I paced and paced. And finally, I got a urine sample just barely above the line that they asked for. The, Did you the- pee for like 20 minutes when you got home? No, uh eventually yeah yeah it was like god i had to go like a like a racehorse <laughs> but it was just humiliating it's just absolute trash just th- held this quest hostage with my black <laughs> old people just sitting in the lobby just their last you know appoint their first appointment of the day and they're just like this bitch you were about to say their last appointment of their lives you said old people in the lobby their last i mean their you're about to say their last appointment of their lives their last minutes on this planet before they cross over being wasted watching you pace because you can't pee that's what you were trying to say i was i was you caught me they want to leave this mortal coil and all they want to do is think about their grandkids and their family but instead they have to tell you to zip up your pants like put put your puss back in your pants lady and go pee <laughs> clock's ticking on me can you put your <laughs> pussy away anyway, why, why are you trash <laughs> oh um <laughs> well you know back in my um early 20s mid 20s i guess i you know didn't have a lot of money. <laughs> and I also, you know, had a lot of body issues. So I didn't eat a lot of carbs. Um, and my methodology of a balanced, healthy, low carb, won't gain weight breakfast that I ate daily. If you want to talk to my old roommates, shout out Ashley Reardon. <laughs> daily i would eat hot dog eggs i'm i'm sorry i there must have been something in my my earphones i thought you said hot dog eggs you heard me right erica i would go and i would take i would crack two eggs and cut up two (laughs) of the jenny o turkey dogs and scramble those in a pan together sauce it up with a little ketchup and go god damn it am i skinny (laughs) oh my god daily daily you know what daily means that means monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday and sunday that's how often i was eating hot dog eggs because it was just like I, I, someone go back and tell this stupid bitch that she'll get her protein just by eating the eggs themselves or maybe throw some spinach in there or kale or something else if you're really that concerned about your weight no no hot dog eggs all protein 
That's what I would say. I would say all protein. <laughs> Idiot. So gross. <laughs> like, I liked hot dogs and everything too. Like I liked hot dogs and macaroni and cheese, hot dogs and ketchup specifically in macaroni and cheese also. And ke- I was, I could see that I could be with you on hot dogs and macaroni and cheese, but not ke- you, you lost me too. on ketchup. Yeah. You put ketchup in there too. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Wow. My trash. Oh man. Hey, Hey Cass, while, while you're on vacation, uh-huh. I want you to be extra careful. Oh, I will. And, you know, thank God that we're seeing this story because this actually takes place about two blocks away from my favorite place that has similar circumstances. Well, according to the LATimes.com, a viral video shows sea lions chasing beachgoers in La Jolla Cave. Yes. So La Jolla is a very fancy part of San Diego, northern San Diego. And, uh, there's a place, there's a couple coves there. One of them is specifically deemed, it's called Children's Pool, which is a cove that they made for kids, but then the seals decided to take it. And it's my favorite place because you can go and you can go look at seals and watch them, but you you absolutely cannot be on that beach because there's too many seals. You're not allowed. But it sounds like from this uh, you know, viral video that the seals and the sea lions have started to take more than just children's pool because this is only you know a few miles down the beach well the issue was a woman got about four feet the woman got about four feet too close to a snoozing sea lion and she was trying to take a photo of it you can't do that it didn't take too kindly to being awakened awkwardly in its slumber and started chasing her down the beach. Which they're not that fast. I mean, they just like flop around. But one started flopping around, then the others caught wind of what was going on. So all of a sudden it became like all of the sea lions were awake and chasing everybody off the beach. <laughs> it, it, looked, it looked like something out of like a sci-fi horror movie. It really did. Because <laughs> they like move around like little like bouncing fat slugs. <laughs> But it's adorable. But yeah. that's the problem. Yeah. So Despite many- how cute they are. <laughs> Not cute. Nope. Somebody asked me uh, in Oklahoma, they were like, oh, why don't you eat fish? And I was like, well, there's more of them than us. And if they ever rise up, I want them to know I don't eat them and that I'm on their side. You know, obviously mm-hmm. doing a bit. And that person did not get my dry humor. and was like, why would the fish come out of the water and i was like oh, i don't know but Not i just want one the- of your oklahoma cousin <laughs> but why would the fish come out of water do they walk <laughs> no this, it wasn't my it wasn't my cousin it was oh it was another lake person it was lake person oh lake per- oh they come out of the water there they got three eyes here because of the oil <laughs> <laughs> oh speaking of oil oil <laughs> Oil make a fire go, f- fire go boom. Oil make a fire go boom. That's, uh, I always say it. <laughs> According to dailymail.co.uk, burning up on the dance floor. Shocking moment of drunk wedding guests sets fire to the venue with the sparkler while grinding on a woman to I'm too sexy. This video is pretty incredible because it looks like someone's dad. Oh my God. So basically viral footage was taken at a wedding ceremony somewhere in the U S and a bearded guest was almost brought the entire venue down in flames. He put out the fire though with his bare hands and then continued with his dancing. It's pretty insane. I watched the video. It looks like the outside of a barn wedding, Everyone's doing their sparklers. He starts grinding on someone and one of his sparklers just hits a flower arrangement like on top of a barrel outside of the front of the barn. Goes up quick, (laughs) by the way. Quick. I've never seen a fire burst this like fast unless I'm looking at a dry Christmas tree. Yeah. (laughs) And uh, yeah, everyone starts screaming fire, fire, fire. He just like turns around with his dance, looks at it, like does like the drunken thing where they have to observe it for a moment to (laughs) understand what they're looking at, tucks his hand into his sleeve and just like hits it with his like, um, 
the fuck it part of, of with his forearm to knock it down before stomping on it. And then people are like, oh, okay. And then the wedding coordinator comes out and she's pissed. He's like, my fucking flammable f- f- flowers. <laughs> I was going to reuse those for another wedding tomorrow. <laughs> Dried flowers are so in. I can reuse them over and over again. You lit them up. Oh my God. I mean, it is, there is that like drunk logic of like, I got to take this one in. And you see the little math going on in his head. Like you do yeah. see the, how am I going to do this? Cause I don't want to stop dancing. Yeah. I mean, again, this looks like this is an older gentleman. He looks like the father of the bride <laughs> or p- probably the uncle, uncle. <laughs> <laughs> the uncle of the bride. <laughs> It has big uncle energy. Yes. Because <laughs> only only your uncle would go sparkler in each hand and grind up on someone to I'm too sexy. I think everyone else would probably mind their business. <laughs> or at least do it without fire. Oh, my God. Oh. It's a very funny video. You know what's not a funny video, though? What? Commercials that are full of lies. You're damn right. I thought that's what the... FCC is supposed to regulate. Oh, oh am I speaking? Out of t- what the fuck does the let's FCC not let's talk? not involve them. In- <laughs> okay, yeah. let's let's not tag them. Don't, no, yeah. no tagging. No All tagging. Right. Don't tag. Don't add the FCC. I don't know if they control podcasts. I think the internet's a free wasteland, brother. <laughs> According to military.com, which sounds like a fake website, uh, <laughs> this is a story on how Pepsi fought a lawsuit over a Harrier jet contest prize. So Harriet Jets are pretty awesome to see in action. That vertical takeoff is real, like, you know, uh, you know, makes the red-blooded Americans get, it really gets them going. So Yeah, like it, it goes up, it, it like takes off going just like up, right? It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's wild to watch. It's yeah. Poof. Yeah. Whatever. So Pepsi in the 19, ni- 1996 had a Super Bowl commercial. And it was kind of listing off the things that you could buy with Pepsi points, which I imagine are some sort of point system you get when you buy Pepsis. And so, you know, it would be uh, just like a bunch of random stuff, but the commercial ends with a Harrier jet landing saying 7 million Pepsi points, which is a joke. Obviously you wouldn't obtain 7 million Pepsi points ever. And also, they're not trying to sell a jet. But but that's not how 21-year-old Leonard saw it. So John Leonard uh, saw the commercial, and he was a business student. So he did a cost-benefit analysis. He found a loophole in the contest rules that would allow him to purchase the jet without getting millions of Pepsi points. So that's what he did. Yeah, so I guess the loophole is that... And, and this wasn't for the jet. This was for anything. So let's say there's a skateboard and the skateboard is 512 Pepsi points. You can either obtain 512 Pepsi points or you can obtain like 24 Pepsi points and then pay like 40 bucks or whatever the equivalent was and then just get the skateboard. So that mm. was the loophole that he found. It's kind of like when you go to a Dave and Buster's and like you really want to get like the blow up hammer but that's 500 tickets and you only have 100 tickets and they're like okay well without all the tickets just like 599 yeah so he basically sent in <laughs> 700,000 dollars and then picked up 15 pepsi points mailed it all in with an extra 10 dollars for shipping and handling yeah so i guess that's how it it, it equated of like With $700,000, you would be able to purchase the equivalent of 7 million Pepsi points. Thus, I am buying this jet for $700,000. So Pepsi was like, um, that was a joke. You can't tell that's a joke. And honestly, no. I mean, yes, Pepsi. no. Yeah. Fuck you, right? Yeah, there wasn't an asterisk that said, this is just a bit. You know, like, you can't get pissy because people took your ad at face value, especially when the context of the ad is here's everything you can buy 
with Pepsi points. Mm-hmm. So you shouldn't put something on there that's not for sale for Pepsi points. And most of the public agreed with him, but Pepsi did end up, I mean, this lawsuit went for like three years. Yeah. Wild. I just like that Pepsi had to fight it for that long. Like that's fun. <laughs> right. And I mean, Pepsi did send back the check. They were like, oh, it was a joke. And then this guy decided to sue them. Um, and the court was like, you can't have that jet. It's obviously a joke. Although I feel like the court only <laughs> ruled that way because they knew it was unreasonable for this guy to have a jet. I think that if this was over a skateboard, Pepsi would have owed this guy a skateboard. Yeah, I, I think this is like, no, man, you can't have a bazooka. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you got him, but you can't have the plane. Yeah, yeah. So, that's I know that there's many an argument that technically I won with my parents, like logistically. I'm like, no, according to your fucking rules, I won. Like your logic was flawed. Your rules. I found the loophole. I won. But you aren't going to let me win because the thing I want to do would cause grave danger to me and possibly everyone around me. Yeah, absolutely. But I won. <laughs> Uh, look, it's just the uh, bad advertising. I mean, I bet that Pepsi reached out to their the people, the ad firm that they went to and was like, you motherfuckers, <laughs> you'll never work in this town again. Yeah. <laughs> you know who might not ever work in this town again either? The man in our next story, the hero the i was gonna say the construction company in this in the next story yeah. oh okay yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so according to boing boing.net here is the incredible story of a man who secretly furnished a hidden room in a mall and lived there for four years so this is about an artist named michael townsend who is a he built a secret home inside of a mall where he lived for four years before he got discovered. It was him and seven other artists. They built and furnished a 750 square foot place in Providence place, Rhode Island and lived there from 2003 to 2007. The artist constructed a wall out of cinder blocks and nondescript utility door to keep them underground, the underground room hidden from others in the mall. They managed to sneak furniture into their secret room and even had a PlayStation 2. It's pretty crazy. I looked at uh, I looked at the pictures and like, it's not a nice place, but like, it's, I mean, for a, like a, a single artist male, I'm like, oh yeah, that's what their apartment would look like. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the, the, it's kind of crazy just seeing like they found basically a loophole in the construction, and uh, I just I just like to think about like the the mall cops that eventually busted them, and they were like, "This is our fucking day, boys." Do you hear me? The, the like the brave heart speech that the head mall cop got to give the other mall cops. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> he was like, "They may never take our segways." <laughs> they'll never take our freedom (laughs) we've been a joke for all this time and now they're gonna find out that this happened under our watch for the past four years (laughs) but we're gonna make it right today (laughs) we'll show them (laughs) there is a film by filmmaker jeremy workman that has been underway and it's a documentary about this story that's going to premiere next year in 2023 so can't wait to learn more about it. I say that genuinely, even though I sound like a newscaster right now. That's all right. That's all right. You know, sometimes you got to be objective. So that was in Rhode Island. And you know what? I think we should take a little trip a little more south. Up uh, to the Big Apple. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you, Erica. <laughs> <laughs> when you said south, I was like, you dumb bitch. New York's not south of Rhode Island. <laughs> Is it though? Like Rhode Island. Well, we're going to we're is going it, to but Florida. Is it <laughs> we're going to Florida? Yeah, the next story is a Florida man story. Oh my god. <laughs> I, I read it Newport. I read it New York. <laughs> and it's about a hot dog vendor. This is this story's got New York written all over it. It does, it does, it does. Oh, so for Fox third- <laughs> I'm a dumbass. <laughs> I was ready to come for you so hard, too. Wow. Wow. wow the bu- wow. the bullet uh, has realized the error in her ways. 
<laughs> from fox13news.com a newport richie man arrested after throwing hot dog at saint peter officer he got busted for selling hot dogs after hours which i didn't know hot dogs had hours but okay <laughs> um and uh, this guy was like I didn't know hot dogs had hours and he threw a hot dog at the cop. Yeah. You could only sell cop <laughs> nine to five. That's what Dolly Parton wrote about. <laughs> <laughs> That's whole song is about hot dogs and hot dog eggs. Can you imagine? <laughs> exactly. Hot dogs are a breakfast food. We love, we know this. So, <laughs> you know, if it's after 10 PM, what are you going to do? Just sell omelets at 10 PM. This isn't a diner. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, my God. So after midnight on a Saturday, which would make it Sunday morning, breakfast, Sunday morning. Yeah. Come on. It's a breakfast food. Mm -hmm. All right. So they gave several warnings to 47 year old Jason Stoll and told him he was in violation of a city city ordinance. (laughs) Listen, man, (laughs) just the fucking uh, a warning to stop the fucking cops, like guns drawn. And they're like fucking give him a warning shot <laughs> that's not i'm sure that's not what they were issuing they were probably giving a verbal warning but they were just they just... should honestly get a petition going because you know how look i if i when we went to drag con we walked outside and they were selling danger dogs up front a danger dog being the bacon wrapped hot dog i think it's called a danger dog because you've got like a one in four chance of getting food poisoning, but my goodness, is it good those other three times? And so do I want a danger dog when I walk at a drag con and at daytime? No. Do I want a danger dog when I walk out of a bar drunk after last call at one 30, 145? Yes. Yes, I do. percent mm-hmm. This is literally like telling this man go home during rush hour yeah during the dinner rush yeah (laughs) illegal illegal to sell hot dogs during the dinner rush how dare you illegal to sell hot dogs during breakfast Mm -hmm. what's what they note too is that the officer was in his full police uniform when it occurred this was not an undercover officer (laughs) this was a fully dressed police officer And take another one for your horse. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, now I could get, if he threw it at a, a police horse, I would get pissed. But That's bullshit. Yeah. It'd be fucking bullshit. I saw a, a great meme that was a pro cat meme. Uh huh. And it was like, listen, if dogs, dogs may be man's best friend, but cats don't bust people for drugs. And I was like, ooh. Wow. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. Yeah, I was like, go cat, cat, put one in the cat column. Yeah. Dogs do sleep through the night, though. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, my cats are guarding the house and doing mischief all night. It's like yeah. having little witches in my home. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> my no witch one... operates all day. I have a new <laughs> puppy. Yes. Podcast? Guess what? I have a new puppy. Puppy, and she's a demon. I do love her, but she's a demon. Yes. Oh my goodness! You know who should have prayed to some witchcraft to uh, spell check and and be a better copywriter? Wow. <laughs> that was a that was a long road, but you got there. <laughs> you know, guys, this is a free podcast, and transitions are not. It's not something you take a class on. It's not Uh a subject in school. It's not even, I've never even seen a comedy class offered on how to make a transition (laughs) from one subject. Segway 101. Yeah, there's no Segway 101. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. According to the HuffingtonPost.com, a.k.a. HuffPost.com, Rhode Island Dunkin' Donuts says it accidentally offered free coffee to white residents a company spokesperson said the offer was copy pasted from a similar offer in white plains new york only the word plains was deleted weird because like it's (laughs) the the, the thing is it would have made sense if like white 
was omitted or York was omitted. But no, somehow the word in the middle of (laughs) anyway. So it originally said offering free coffee to White Plains, New York residents. But then they yeah, they deleted it to make it for the Rhode Island. And it said limited to White Cranston, Rhode Island residents. (laughs) Oops. On this was on Facebook, too. (laughs) So the Duncan spokesperson, Kelsey Chester, told the station that seemingly racist offer was an unfortunate and embarrassing mistake. (laughs) In any case, dozens of people lined up to get their free coffee. There was a woman. (laughs) Oh, well, that's uh, fucked up, but great. Let's go. (laughs) It's like, oh, I didn't know we were saying the quiet part out loud, but okay. (laughs) Dunkin Donuts checks out. All right. A Boston based company doing Boston based things. (laughs) Just kidding. I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have said that about Boston. (laughs) But (laughs) you know who you are. Anyone has room for improvement. (laughs) Shelly Ramsey, a black woman and regular at the store, was shocked to find out about the post, but she believes that it was an accident. She said it's too racially diverse in there. It's that's just not how things roll. So she knew she she knew when she saw it that that was a typo. (laughs) This isn't the first time Duncan location has come under fire for apparent insensitivity, though. In June 2018, a Baltimore location was criticized for posting a sign that offered customers coupons if they reported any employees shouting in languages other than English. I mean, sometimes I switch to Spanish when I eat their shitty fucking donuts because I'm so angry about how bad they are. So that's not fair. Yeah. uh, Shouting only in English. (laughs) (laughs) Quietly murmuring is only allowed in other languages. (laughs) Yeah, you're only allowed to speak other languages under your breath while making eye contact with someone. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my gosh. In addition, in October of that year, two employees at a franchise in Syracuse, New York, were fired after a viral video showed one of them pouring water on an unhoused man. Oof. Man, I miss the days when we were telling stories about Dunkin' Donuts where the regular married the employee and they got married at the Dunkin'. Oh, I remember that. That was so nice. That was nice. That was much nicer. You know what else is nice? What? You got another story from Huff- Huffington Post. Oh, go, go, Ariana. Ariana Huffington. Kangaroo escapes captivity thanks to the help of another animal. Wow. That's not trashy. That's just nice. This is uh, actually, it's trashy because this was the plot of the children's book I was writing. Um, Erica no, no, no. Schitz? Erica Sch- <laughs> <laughs> No, my, mine was about a, it, 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 mine was about a, a kangaroo that always gets help from all his little friends. No, no, no. Anyway, uh, <laughs> a kangaroo's Louisiana owners could reportedly face charges if they don't give up the marsupial. Man, it's pissing me off ever since COVID and I watched Tiger King to realize how many people in the fucking South have zoos like Matt Damon style. We bought a zoo like just owning zoos. What the fuck? How do people do this? How is that legal? It's crazy what money does to people. And they're like, what can I own? Like, it, it's not. It's like, OK, boats, houses, stocks. land, stocks. And they're like a charity. No, but what <laughs> thing that's alive can I own? I think I like a kangaroo. <laughs> yes. OK, I I, I might have been high off my ass on gas, but there's, there's a family that owned like emus and a lot of like wild variety animals. And and they lived like off the highway coming from like my hometown to like the big town where my dentist lived. And that, you know, they had like really exotic pets sometimes, but a lot of like emus and stuff like that, that, you know, you'd be driving along and you're used to seeing cows on the side of the highway, but every once in a while you'd be like, holy shit, that's an exotic bird. That's wild. I swear to God, one time after I was coming back from the dentist, jumping along the highway, I saw a kangaroo. Everyone thought I was fucking nuts. And I was like, no, I swear. I think that I think the cooties have a kangaroo and everyone, the cooties, the cootie, the cootie zoo, the cooties, they (laughs) said, everyone said I was crazy. And now I'm like, I think they were rich enough 
that they probably could have had a kangaroo on the land. And it was so bad, you know, they had so many acres, but anyway, I, I might've just been gassed up from the dentist trip and, and made it all up and probably shouldn't have been driving alone, but I swear I saw a kangaroo hopping. Let me ask but, you something. Yes. About yes. this. Mm-hmm. Do you think, and listeners weigh in. So how old were you when this happened? 16 to 18. 16 to 18. So this had to have occurred somewhere in the 2014 to 2016 range. 2015? No, no 20, 20, 2003 to 2005. Oh, right. That's, yeah, of course we were in our 20s in the, in the 2010s. Okay. Anyways, that's what I meant. Let's just say that's what I meant. So you could say something happened back then. And people will maybe doubt you, but also sometimes people might believe you. And now if something like that happened, you could have taken out your phone and recorded it. Exactly. What Mm -hmm. I want to know is, let's say you couldn't get your phone fast enough because that Mm -hmm. fucking happens. Mm -hmm. Do you think people disbelieve people more now because the phone is an option or less? Oh, does that make sense? Like, is this story, is that story less believable now or is it more believable now? Because it's like, I couldn't get my phone out. I was trying, but it was like too fast. It's like, ah, would you have believed it more or less? Yeah, I, I spent half of, I went to a music festival on Saturday and I spent half of a, of a music set trying to capture, there was a, an older Italian man that was a security guard. And every about 10 minutes, he would whip out a round, like a beautiful round brush that you would blow out your hair with. <laughs> and he would slick back his hair with it <gasps> and then put it, he kept it in his back pocket. Beautiful. And I, I spent, instead of paying attention to the music festival, I spent about half the festival trying to take a video of him doing that. Did you get one? I got like, but it's like a fraction of a second. And I was like, fuck, but I was like, no one's going to believe me. I don't get this on video. (laughs) Okay. So Baxter, who's a Joey at this Baton Rouge enclosure escaped with the help of a parrot named Thor, man, we have bird stories on bird stories these Mm -hmm. past couple of weeks. Mm -mm. Mm. So anyway, the, the escape, the, the kangaroo's owners who previously owned a zoo now have to give up Baxter due to a local law. Wow. But speaking of local law and, and little, little, <laughs> I have a little cat that broke into the room I'm recording in. He broke past two closed doors somehow. Whoa. Which is good. And <laughs> again, they're little fucking witches. <laughs> somehow without opposable thumbs he entered two closed doors and then just jumped in my lap you gotta go baby mama's recording bye 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 out out you go out out damn spot mama's gotta <laughs> mama's gotta keep you in uh, clothes and diapers no no out Ugh. anyway uh, the point is is that this parrot figured out a way to open the cage the joey escaped and now these people's zoo is falling apart one animal at a time. And I'm glad. Yeah, I, I don't, don't know think if they need it. I don't think kangaroos belong in Louisiana. <laughs> no, I don't think so. But speaking of more animal laws, another Huffington Post story. And you could say that Erica was spending too much time on the Huffington Post, but this one was sent in by Tina Curry. Yes. Uh, Texas homeowners face lawsuit after feeding ducks. This is wild. A retired Cypress, Texas couple has been sued for up to $250,000 after feeding the ducks in their neighborhood. The Neighborhood Homeowners Association are suing the couple George and Kathleen Rowe for alleged neighborhood rule violations that are detrimental to the subdivision. All right, here's the thing. Ducks apparently will fuck up your pool. You can have your (laughs) Sopranos moment where there's a duck in the pool and stuff, but like, they'll fuck your shit up. Yeah. I had a friend that had, had like a mama duck and her ducklings sneak into her pool last summer and they would like get into the pool filter. It, it, it was like a whole shit thing in there. It's a whole thing. 
but it's illegal in LA County to transport ducks in your own car. Like you can't relocate them. They have to leave on their own. It's like the whole thing. It's wild. Anyway, anyway. So yeah, basically they had a, their home has a porch that looks out a waterway filled with ducks. And so she believed the ducks were dumped in the area without necessary survival skills. I don't get that. <laughs> like this woman says that she's feeding them because she thinks that the ducks are going to die if she doesn't. Yeah. And I'm like, listen, babe, that's nature. You know, the, that species gets stronger if the dumb ducks die and don't reproduce. Yeah, so the the HOA says that neighbors are tearing up that the ducks will tear up the gardens with their beaks, and that the USDA says that human food isn't even healthy for ducks, and that they can pollute the waterways with feces up to a pound in a day, which feels unnecessary information, but okay. We have a neighbor. Ooh, uh, it makes me mad, Erica. It makes me fucking mad. I hear it like once or twice a week, maybe even once daily. I don't know, but I can hear it out the window. I'll just hear. And I said, what's that sound? It's my neighbor throwing peanuts and bread into the alley for the squirrels and the raccoons. Uh Uh-uh. Uh-uh. So we have motion sensor lights in the alley because there was a bout with criminals <laughs> in our building for a while. And so we got this advanced security system. So like the whole HOA, everybody wanted them. So because my neighbor goes <laughs> and throws out all this fucking food in the alley, every night those fucking motion detector lights that are so bright just pop on like four or five times a night because the raccoons are like, well, we should probably stop by the buffet every night. And like the squirrels are, are brave and wild and they come up on our patio and they taunt the dog. It, it drives me nuts, but I don't know how to say to her, hey, can you stop throwing shit over your balcony? Like what you're doing sucks. I, I can't figure out how to say it. And it, uh, you know, sometimes... I don't advocate for this, but is it maybe sometimes if you write out how you feel and then leave a note taped to their door? They're going to know who it was. Can you sneak it in their mailbox? I I don't want to start a war. I don't want to start a war because the problem is is like, look, they have dogs that bark. I have a dog that barks. (laughs) I just kind of want to will them to stop doing it without having to any confrontation (laughs) or what I believe is the better option is I move. (laughs) I just completely relocate. Uh Yeah. (laughs) Which is actually what the couple in this story might have to do because they can't afford this uh, quarter million dollar lawsuit. They're putting like, they're ready to put their house up for sale. So they did, they did put it up because they were like, okay, well we can't afford to, pay this lawsuit if we don't sell the house like how fucked up that's so wild yeah you know that would drive me to drinking you know most things do to for me i'm sorry not for you (laughs) no not far off yeah (laughs) i love this story according to dailymail.co.uk tennis fans come up with an insane theory that princess kate middleton was the, quote, 700 drinks woman who drove Nick Kyrgios mad by distracting him in a crucial game during Wimbledon final. I'm so sorry if I pronounced that athlete's name incorrectly. Yeah, so he was playing a match against Novak Djokovic. Djokovic? Djokovic? Look, we're not tennis experts. We're not tennis experts. Nick and Novak were playing a game of tennis. A casual game. Probably not an important one. Is Novak the one that's anti-vax? Anyway, it doesn't matter. One of them's, one tennis player is real vocal about it. Anyway, so it took a, a tennis took a back seat in the third set when Novak 
well known for his exchanges with the crowd, implored the chair umpire to remove an allegedly intoxicated woman in the stands who kept interrupting him during points. He said, she's drunk out of her mind in the first row talking to me in the middle of the game. The one with the dress. And then the umpire said, with the dots? And then he said, the one who looks like she's had about 700 drinks, bro. Ooh, wee. And of course, online detectives were quick to claim that Middleton was wearing a dress with polka dots in the front row where he was pointing. Okay. <laughs> it's funny because the umpire was the one who said polka dots. He didn't say anything about polka, dot- polka dots. He's just said the one who's drunk, basically, which the culprit ended up being this 32 year old polish medical lawyer who was also wearing a polka dot dress and she says that she only had two drinks and was given some water before being allowed back to watch the rest of the game after a 15 minute break (laughs) yeah 15 minute cool down break that's all it takes to not be drunk anymore is 15 minutes can you imagine being in a public place where the athlete says that bitch needs a cool down like if i were at the music festival and willie nelson was like hold on y'all that girl in the crowd somebody get her some water no i'm not for like i just can't play while she continues to yell my lyrics back at me (laughs) yeah so the internet went crazy was like kate middleton is the only one in the front row who's wearing polka dots so obviously it was kate middleton who was filthy drunk at this wimbledon Yes, it was super fun. Uh, I mean, yeah, uh, I just, uh, I love it. I love it. She said she was actually rooting for you from the start. What made you, what do you make of that? Asked one journalist. We were rooting for you. We all were rooting for you. (laughs) Tyra Banks, top model. (laughs) Yeah. Oh my goodness. So yeah, I mean, the online pundits, the internet, they all just went wild. One woman posted a hilarious image of former British prime minister, Theresa May, downing a glass of wine at the tennis with the caption 701 hun with a waving hand emoji. Oh, wow. (laughs) These cheeky Brits. Yes, they're so cheeky. (laughs) Tennis is wild, man. It's like you can tell the crowd to shut up. Uh, Yeah, it's it's, it's an exchange. Uh, I like it. Yeah, it's super fun. But I'd rather stick to my sport in in America. The Florida Man games? Yes, the Florida Man games. the, the, The games that we originated, you know. I'll tell you what. Nobody loves to run from the cops on a riding mower more than a man from Florida. <laughs> it's it's like their God-given inalienable right. <laughs> I said, oh, when the, it, <laughs> the day you purchase that mower is uh, one day closer to when you're fleeing the cops. <laughs> it's you actually know? like in the owner's manual. It's like, That's what they say. You're going to want to page to turn to page 17 and review the fleeing the cops section. <laughs> Make sure that you're three beers deep and that you always get on the freeway. So according to abcnews.com, a Florida man arrested after trying to flee deputies on a riding lawnmower. So he was arrested or he avoided arrest on suspicion of stealing a boat in January by diving into a swamp. <laughs> this was the first time that he tried to get away. Oh, no, I'm sorry. He was successful when he dived into a swamp. But oh, my God. Now they have finally found him. <laughs> ah! He said, I have defeated you in water. Now it's time to defeat you on land. <laughs> and he failed, <laughs> which is too bad because his next plan on defeating them with air was probably going to be really cool. Yeah. Yeah. When he became an airbender, that's when he would have. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he kicked his John Gear riding lawnmower into high gear while attempting to lose the pursuing deputies. And when he was taken into custody, he had a revolver and a handcuff key in his possession, along with a pipe and Hey, why not some methamphetamine or at least residue in the pipe for Mm -hmm. meth, a handcuff key. That is interesting. I've never heard that before. (laughs) He planned on escaping. (laughs) That's, I mean, a modern day Harry Houdini. 
<laughs> or a David Copperfield to swim into a swamp or like that feels like something that like an internet troll would be like if you could bring one thing into prison what would you bring and every like troll who thinks he's so smart and like doesn't have sex is like <laughs> obviously a handcuff key idiot that's like he was gonna swallow it and then <laughs> shit it out <laughs> and then like by the time he shits it out it's like you're not in handcuffs anymore <laughs> It's like, no, you've just ruptured your intestines for no, nothing. bro. You just digested a key. That's all. Oh my God. So he is being held with no bond. And it was not clear if he had retained an attorney as of Monday. And his relatives could not be immediately reached for questions or comments. I'm just imagining someone who's in handcuffs in the back of a police car. <laughs> who thought to themselves i'm going to brilliantly hide a handcuff key in my butthole and trying to pick a handcuff key out of their anus while handcuffed while in a car presumably with pants on (laughs) that seems like a very funny (laughs) moment (laughs) and you're like the cops are like why is he having a tantrum back there and it's because he played himself (laughs) He's like, I'll show them. Uh, 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 oh, oh no. Oh. I can't get my butthole. <laughs> Ew. Loosen these a little bit because I need to get in my butthole. Oh my god. There's a little key in my butthole and then I'll get out. <laughs> what are you gonna do? You gonna put your handcuffs back on me? I have butthole fingers. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Speaking of butthole fingers, no, I'm just kidding. Oh my god, but are you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? <laughs> I'm ready. It's time for the dumpster fire of the week. Oh my god. Boy oh boy, in something that didn't surprise me at all, we're being brought from vulture.com. Jen Shaw's last minute plea and all the questions it raises. If you don't know what we're talking about, this is Coming to you from the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. So Jen Shaw had maintained her innocence up until she didn't. I think we covered this when Jen got arrested. But basically, she's Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. It's been on for two seasons. And she's, you know, one of the housewives. She got arrested last year. I want to say while they were filming and then she was arrested on a bunch of counts of wire fraud, conspiracy to commit wire fraud, money laundering, like a lot of shit. Basically, she was like preying on elderly people and scamming them out of a lot of money. And you watch the show and she does have a lot of money and it makes you wonder why, because she doesn't really talk about what she does for a living. Her husband's a football coach, but whatever, that doesn't matter. The point is, this all happened on the show the arrest and she spent all of second season just swearing swearing i'm innocent this is gonna ruin my family i can't believe i've been framed for this blaming her assistant everything she could to like swear up and down that she was innocent and i feel like i didn't finish season two i've actually been rewatch or i haven't been rewatching it but i'm trying to finish it now I feel like everyone kind of believed her eventually. Uh, everyone but Mary. Mary was like, clink, clink, bitch, you're going to jail. <laughs> Which is Mary too bad because yeah. Mary Cosby is the fucking worst. <laughs> so I don't like to side with her. Uh, yeah, it was wild how, again, someone that was basically arrested on camera for defrauding the elderly in a telemarketing scheme ever, like became somewhat likable on the show like it was breezy like easy she was just like fun after she got arrested i mean yeah kind of like she kind of loosened up a little bit look none of these women like each other and it's it's been difficult for me to get through this season of the housewives it's probably why i don't like to watch the housewives in general is like i i do like watch them and go why are they hanging out? And then I'm like, well, it's, it's a TV show. That's why they have to hang out. But like, I almost would rather watch scripted, more scripted drama because I'm like, it's more believable than, than the fact that a group of women like does an activity once a week together where they yell at each other. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
these women are also like doing a lot of activities. Like I've I'm never really- gone on an ATV trip with my friends or hiking or been like, Hey, so I want to throw a dinner for me and basically like 10 of us. And <laughs> I'm thinking that we'll hire a private chef and we'll go sledding and it'll definitely like ease the tension in between all of us. And I'm going to do this once a week or we're going to rotate. I'm going to do it. And the next week, maybe you can do it. It's a really great way of putting it as like activities to yell at each other. <laughs> like I just, I've never been into the housewives franchise, but I started watching Salt Lake because you hoarded it. And so I was like, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to try one. It's, I like to start things from the beginning. And I was like, this is the second season or like, I watched it in the first season. I was like, okay, I'm on board for this, but definitely in the second season, I'm like, they really fucking hate each other. Like they all fucking really seem to hate each other. I can't believe that one of them is like, I'm going to throw a party where everyone eats pho and I'm inviting everyone. <laughs> Even though clearly in the last episode, it was stated that one of them did never wanted to see the other one again. But She's I think like, if I yeah. throw a party in the park <laughs> where everyone eats pho, everything will be fine. She's like, listen, if you're going to invite that person, don't invite me to the same thing. She's like, hmm. You know what I'll do? I'll invite them to the same thing. <laughs> and it's like, God. Anyways, whatever. We don't have to break down the house. <laughs> but the but she, she can't. So basically, she. But the amazing thing is, like, they, <laughs> they captured. Someone gave her a phone call. Someone gave Jen Shaw a phone call, and they have the phone call on record where her face goes, "Oh shit, I'm about to get arrested. I'm on camera." And, yeah. and you watch her go. Like, can, you, can, you, can you take my mic off? Can yes. you take this off? Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. she told people that her husband was having internal bleeding and she needed to go. So now the rest of the housewives think that her husband, who is a very nice man, it, yeah. is, it appears on the show and, and in real life, it seems, is, well, is like internal bleeding. Then hours later, they hear Jin Shaw has been arrested on federal charges <laughs> it's wild anyway yeah they spend the next few episodes screaming at each other of like why weren't you on the bus if you didn't speak to the fbi it's a whole thing anyway so she's saying up and down that she's not that she's innocent she's innocent she's innocent and then turns out because she had a court date set this week or something or last week like minutes before it was about to be over she like shows up and was like, I'm guilty. Yeah, she she pled guilty to two. Uh, she was facing two serious federal crimes, conspiracy to commit wire fraud and conspiracy to commit money laundering. And so, you know, they were like, listen, she portrays herself on the show as wealthy and successful business person. And, you know, her, you know, her job was uh, committing fraud on elderly, vulnerable victims. She went on. And people in her, like, so she, she wasn't just, like, isolated. People in her network, in her world, had been getting arrested for these other crimes. You know, she didn't commit this in a vacuum. Yeah. Other people she knew were also going to jail. And she was just like, probably not me. You know, everyone flips and flips and flips and flips. A hundred percent. I mean, that's, that's the way that you get the big boss is you get all the little ones first. Yeah. She, cause the way she explained her business on housewives was that she was basically part of like data mining and, and, and algorithm kind of stuff. You know, when you sign up for Olive Garden member rewards program, Olive Garden is going to sell your email address and your phone number and your address and your age and every in your birthday to a different company, maybe Jen Shaw's company. And then Jen Shaw's company will sell that information to Facebook or Amazon or something. That's like what she said she did. What she was actually doing, maybe she was doing some legitimate stuff, but she was also selling, oh, everyone who is over 70, I'm going to sell that to people who are frauding people and you know what yeah. i might fraud them also because fuck it yeah so if you were like oh i want to start a, a business I, I you know I'm, I'm making these uh you know shaws uh, you know name shaw but like uh, i'm making shawls uh, you know i want to do this and you're like how do i promote a small business Her, she would essentially you know you would google 
how to market a small business. And then the algorithm would target you for, you know, these business services. And then they would call you up and and advertise business services type thing and then sell you more and more. And then you would never make money on these. You would just continue to buy business services, knowing that you were, you know, not business savvy, not, you know, necessarily wealthy and, and yeah, they would bleed them dry. It was pretty bad. So, I mean, she, yeah, she played guilty. I think it was, they were trying to blame her first assistant for a while, but Stu, <laughs> yeah, which Stu. I think he knew what was going on too, but like, yeah, she ended up pleading guilty and there's other housewives that have so far been radio silent since her pleading guilty. Um, there was a couple housewives like during the filming of the show that were like, you know, if she says that she's innocent, then I believe her or like so one of them, Heather even said during the taping, I love her. I don't care if she's guilty or not, which is kind of fucked up because it's like, yeah, yeah, like I feel like they've made um, Meredith Marks out to be a villain for reserving judgment and saying, oh, I'm just going to wait this out to see if uh, maybe she's guilty. That's obviously the thing you do. Yeah. Uh, it's wild. Yeah. And like the day before she pled guilty, Meredith Marks posted like a long, like innocent until proven guilty <laughs> Instagram post. Awkward. And she's been silent since Jen Shaw has pled guilty. Yeah. Jen Shaw's own mother drained her yep. retirement to def- to help fund her defense and then Jen uh, her so her assistant slash business partner already had Stu Stu Smith that we mentioned earlier said he was going to testify against her and I think (sighs) like she just saw like writing is on the wall you know yeah it's pretty crazy I'll tell you what, if you're in the business of targeting the elderly or the more vulnerable so that you can fraud them out of their money, I don't give a fuck that you're going to cry because you can't see your son go to prom. You made your fucking bed. Yeah. There's consequences to actions. And when people are full blown criminals, I just, I feel nothing like for the, mis- like the consequences for the mistakes they made. I feel bad for her family if they genuinely didn't know but I don't fucking feel bad for her. No. You don't and deserve she, to see your son go to prom. She should have thought about her son. People. Yeah. 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 How about just make a legitimate business? There's probably a lot of money in just selling, you know, the information that people give away freely. Mm-hmm. I don't have to do it with the intent. Of, I don't know. Whatever. It is what it is. It is a dumpster fire. I'll say that. It's the dumpster fire of the week. Wow. Hey, what are you hoarding? I'm hoarding Tangere, a Ooh. book. <laughs> okay, bitch. Hell yeah. A book about Stephanie Johnson. Oh, I she thought was... it was. I thought you were talking about the gin. Nope. No, 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 no. I mean, that's delightful. And that's very gin. I was like, okay, martini girl. <laughs> no, it's a book about the life of Stephanie Johnson. She was featured on the Humans of New York Instagram page. Mm-hmm. And her life just seems so interesting. I mean, we could not get enough. We could not get enough of her story and the, you know, the person behind the humans of New York Instagram wrote a book about her life and it just came in the mail today and I opened it and I can't wait to learn more about Stephanie Johnson and the life that she's lived. And I'm really excited and, you know, just search Tangare and you can hear more about her stories and stuff like that. But yeah, go, go back, read the Instagram post. And she just seems like a very interesting person. So yeah. What are you hoarding? I am hoarding a book, another book, Stay and Fight by Madeline Fitch. I don't think I did that one last week. I think I did the last thing he told me. I've been doing a lot of books lately. Stay and Fight by Madeline Fitch. It's a cool book. It's like about, it's told from the perspective of four different people. It's about, it's a fiction novel about um, people who like choose to live on a commune in West Virginia or Appalachia or whatever. Um, And sometimes you read the book and it's frustrating, but also it's very interesting. And uh, something I liked about it is sometimes in this current world, we feel very separated and polarized away from the people who like live life differently than us, you Mm -hmm. know? 
Mm -hmm. when in fact we might have like a lot of the same views um so like you know there's like gay women on this commune and and uh they believe in like private property or like they don't believe in private property and they believe in all this kind of stuff that i'm like oh wow like but a lot of people in big cities believe in that too but you kind of just like people who have different lifestyles as you you kind of just write them off as being stupid or whatever Mm -hmm. so anyways i don't know i just liked it cool cool i can't wait to stay and fight by madeline fitch and fitch spelled with two f's in the beginning it's weird but you know what it doesn't matter Mm. Mm -mm -mm. all right oh what are you throwing out sorry (laughs) i was like okay i'm throwing away and hear me out and there is science behind me before anybody goes what or ew i'm throwing away the bacteria resort that is a loofah that those put the soap on your body (laughs) take a bar soap and just put it to your arm and then you know what you do you rinse the soap off your body and you rinse the bar of soap off under the water a loofah is full of bacteria if you don't dry it out a hundred hundred percent it, it, they're so nasty inside of them. I've had so many scientists and doctors that agree with me because uh, me and Winston got into it because he thinks white people smell like dogs when we get wet, which there is science behind that. And it's true. What? It's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. Okay. But we disagree about washcloths and loofahs. And I said, listen, I used to be a loofah bitch. I used to love a loofah. But I was like, those things are so fucking nasty. Throw your loofahs away, y'all. Put the soap on your body directly. It's fine. It's fine. Throw away your loofahs. They're nasty. Unless you use a brand new loofah every time, which would be so wasteful and insane there's Stop people who like make loofahs themselves on tiktok and i'm like okay like, out of what i don't i don't know i saw like I'll, if i see it again i'll send it to you but I, I saw it and i was like that's fucking stupid like that's too much work and there's actually in the house that i'm staying at right now there's a loofah in the shower but it almost looks like decoration <laughs> so like maybe it is i don't know like it looks like it's just like a decorative coral on the wall <laughs> and you're like don't do i use it do i not anyway when you're throwing out loofahs are you throwing out like all like like a poof as well define a poof what's a poof <sighs> <laughs> i'm talking about the balls the ball that has a little hoop that you hang up that's a poof you're not ta- a loofah itself is like a hard beige coral reef looking no, 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 no. Like, it scratches no. the fuck out of your skin, exfoliates no. you, and cleans you. No, that's a puma stone. Erica, we need to define. I'm talking about the the, the little, the, the, a poof, I guess. Babe, like, that's you, a poof. It's a poof. I, I'm called it a loofah. But it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's on. not. I mean, I, I hear you, uh, but it's not. The internet came when I said loofah. It came up with the thing I'm picturing. Lufa. L O O F A H. Okay, well, when I say Lufa, I, I'm getting what I'm talking about. Oh no, the algorithm is fucking with us. You know what? It shows both. It shows natural Lufas, which are the beige little monsters that I'm talking about, and oh, the poof. Okay. And then it shows a vegetable. Oh, I'm not talking about the vegetable. L U F F A. I'm talking about the little round things. Okay. The mesh roundy things, those are full of bacteria. Throw them away. Stop using them. Anyway, off of me, what are you throwing away? (laughs) Enough about me. What do you dislike? I'm throwing out seats in the sun at a baseball game. You guys, what are we doing this for? (laughs) Holy shit. I, we got, we went to a baseball game. It was like Sunday day game. And wouldn't you know it our seats there was like three seats that were in direct sun like the whole fucking game and you might say to me well what do you expect it was a day game i don't know 
I don't know, but I wasn't expecting that. My little thighs burned. It was hot. It was hot. I like, I, I, I spent more time just kind of doing laps around Petco Park and seeing what kind of restaurants and beer they had than to actually sit in my seat because I was fucking melting. Ah, that sounds terrible. What what is up with that? Like certainly we must have other options. Like can't you is there a way to create shade over the whole stadium without affecting the baseball players? I don't know. <laughs> like why do they even sell those seats? Oh, I don't know. Stupid. <laughs> Sometimes it's like over 90 degrees when baseball players play. I know. I started worrying about them. I was like they always <laughs> play like this. They're they're gonna be all right. Yeah, they'll be all right. Okay, well, I'm not getting paid millions of dollars to sit out there. In fact, I'm paying <laughs> for the for the luxury. I was just I was just saying before the podcast, I told Erica, look, Kate, <laughs> that inflation is so bad that we were at the baseball game and the prices we were paying for beers and hot dogs. I was like, well, that's fine. Like, <laughs> We bought two hot dogs and a margarita. It was like 40 bucks. And I was like, yeah, that sounds right. See, at the music festival, they had three samplings of rosé at the booth. And the so I got my little sample. And then the owner, I started talking to the owner. And he's like, oh, get you some more samples. So I get back in line to get more samples. But the the person giving out the samples did not see my friendly conversation with the owner. Oh, no. So they just see greedy little bitch Erica there for more samples. They don't see the kind owner saying, go get more, go, go get in line again. And so I just look like, I'm here for the, I'm here for the (laughs) rosé. Just rosé goblins. Humility. Free liquor, please. (laughs) Yes. More, more, more. That's funny. Humiliating. Yeah. Well, babes, my Mac is telling me low power. So I think, where do they find you? They can find me at iconic Erica Curry on Instagram and on Twitter at Gilly Gal. Where can they find you? At Cass Cardenas on Instagram and Twitter. I'm going to start a Twitter for her and Instagram for my dog, but we'll talk about it later when I actually do it. You can find this podcast at Trashy Trashy Podcast on Instagram, Twitter, Trashy Trashy Podcast at gmail.com if you want to send us stories and tell us why you're trash. And we also have trashy trashy podcast.com. Please leave us a five star review. It really fucking helps us out. And we love you so much. Thank you so much, trash cans. My computer's gonna die. Okay. All right. Trash gas. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, trash? <laughs> hey, gas. What's going on, girl? Stay garbage. You stay garbage, girl. I love you. Love you. Bye bye. Bye.